So now we've coloured our image and we know that we can recolour it again in any other colours for any other elements that we want to do. Um, it's looking okay but it's looking a bit cartoony and a bit too much like a comic book image rather than a woodcut. And our model is a German expressionist woodcut and the wood part of that means what it says. The German printmakers and English as well often would use pieces of wood to cut into and when they printed the grain of the wood would show up in the image as well. So what we want to do is we want to find a way in Illustrator that we can incorporate that wood grain into the image and it's happily quite easy to do. So to show you how I'm going to show you first of all where you get some suitable imagery of wood grain from and I just searched on Google for wood grain and I came across and then I think I set the size to be large up here and then I set uh, that was all I needed to do and therefore I found lots and lots of images of bitmaps of um, images of wood, different wood grains and different wood surfaces that I could use and I clicked on one of them at one point and I found this one here which is free to download and I just downloaded that and used that. So if I now go back to Illustrator and then have a look in the finder you can see that here I've got four that I picked that was the one we were just looking at here's another one here's another one and this is the one I'm going to be using for today so let's just have a look and see how that works and to make sure that works properly I'm going to show you in a new file which has just got um, two parts to it it's got the linked file that I've just placed in there remember you can go file place or you can just drag it in from the finder and then I made a rectangle underneath it now it's important that the rectangle is underneath and that the um, image that you're going to use is above so I select both of those by either clicking on that one there holding down shift and clicking on that one or by clicking and dragging over both of them or by going up to our old friend here and clicking in the top corner to select all the artwork when I do that on my transparency palette which can be found under the Windows menu if you don't have it to hand. In my transparency palette, I can go make opacity mask or I can just hit the button make mask. And when I do that, I get this effect, which suggests that the wood grain is part of the color of the blue. Now, if I click on it again and change the blue to this sort of purple color, I get the same thing and I can just choose any colour that I like anywhere in the spectrum to get it at any tone. When I want to click back on the artwork you can see that that's got a dark edge there. If I click on the mask again you can see it reflects that change on the layers palette. So if I click off and now just click on the links file that's where I can move that one around. Okay. If I then watch the layers palette when I let's move it over here let's watch the layers palette when I click on the the artwork in the transparency palette it jumps back to reflect the normal stuff that we get in Illustrator right so that's how you can make an opacity mask so let's just close that file down don't save changes let's go back to our one that's here now I'm going to do the same thing with this one here so I'm going to go file place which is I've lost it it's temporary grayed out as because my layer is locked so I need to unlock that okay and now go file place and then I'm going to get that last one and I'm just going to click and place it there now it's above the red which is great but it's the wrong way round okay so I want to rotate it and there's lots of different ways I can do that but whilst it's selected I could either go object transform rotate or on Mac or PC, I can right click and choose Arrange, or sorry, Transform, Rotate, and then we'll just do it 90 degrees. Click OK, and then we've got it there. Now let's move it over the red. And remember, we're on the red layer, so now if I click on there, I select both the red and the link file, and then I can just click Make a Mask, and it gives it that that effect straight away. So let's see if we can double that up by trying it on the, the blue or let's try an alternative method. Let's go to this one here. Let's click on the blue on the what well, was brown, I'm going to call it blue now. As I've made a change. Click on it so it's selected. 
and instead of changing and adding a mask to this out, I'm going to see if I can use an interaction of the colour between the blue and the red there. So let's just try a different blending mode. Sometimes when you've got other shapes, this won't work, but you can see straight away if I go to multiply, I pick up the effect of the um, of the uh, wood grain through the image. But because I've got other shapes underneath, they themselves then become flat shapes and I'd have to go through and change their blending mode. And that could work or it might not. So let's just go back to normal and forget that. Let's try to repeat the same thing that I did just now with the red. So we're, we're going to lock all the other layers. Let's hide that one there and lock it. We're in the blue layer and we're going to go file. We're going to go place and we're going to get that same wood grain there. Okay, Click there. And again, it's around the wrong way. So we're going to go right click, transform, rotate 90 degrees. So we've got it there. Bring it over the image. Okay. And then we're going to reveal all the things that are on that layer there. Click in there to select them all. And let's try make mask. And we get this effect which comes up here. Now it's working quite nicely in places. But again, these colors these block colours aren't working so well. If I take that off and I take that off there and maybe we could just reduce that layer down. That doesn't work too badly. Let's just reduce the opacity down on that a bit. You have it selected so let's just select it there and reduce the opacity down. That gives us quite a nice effect but you could say there's a bit too much wood grain going on there um, and we need to dampen that down a bit. And I think I would agree with that. The image is getting slightly lost. So what we're going to do is we're going to undo some of the changes we made. So we're going to undo the opacity to bring that one back. We're going to undo previous changes that we did. Undo layers, panels, options. Again, and undo that again. And undo make opacity mask. All right, so now what we want to think is, is there a way that we could make this mask work more effectively? And I think there might be. What we're going to do is duplicate that layer blue, right? lock the one underneath, go to the top one, take out the, um, the mask, so we've got that there, lock it and hide it for a second. Then we're going to go to this one, unlock it, select everything on it, and we're going to make a mask which will give us the effect that we had before. Now we're going to make this dark blue one visible again. Let's just click on it there and make sure it's on normal. I'm going to lock that layer so we can't change it. Click on here and select everything and then change this. So let's see what effects we get. That works quite nicely there. We are getting a little bit of a dark area around there, but that's okay. And we're picking up the blend there and we're on multiply. So multiply is a good one. But the idea is you keep going through, colour burn might be even better. The light is not going to be so good and the screen will be another light one. It's hard to remember what all of these um, different effects do because they have different complex mathematical relationships. I quite like that one, that works quite well. It might even change some of this shape around here. So that's overlay. Soft light is okay. Hard light. Hard light's quite good. Not so keen on difference or exclusion. And so on. We could just go through and try these different ones. That that works quite nicely in many ways. Try that again. We're still getting these shapes, we might need to work with those a little bit. But that works quite well. But I'm gonna click on it again, and I think it was overlay that I liked. And that can be um, my lino cut. So by what we've done there is we've applied the wood grain to the whole image multiple times, but we've also experimented with blending modes. And I think what I would probably want to do there is work into this shape. So I would lock that shape, unlock this shape, click on it so I've got it selected, and think about adding some points and making it less obvious where that shape starts and ends. So I could, I could do that by manipulating the points, which I think is another video. And we'll leave that for another day. Until then, I'm quite happy with the way that's working.